What's up guys, Everything Fish, bringing you episode number two on the Species Info series, because the first one did really well. Last time I checked it was 72 views, 8 likes. So we're going to do episode number two, and this was requested by Herps Fish. And he just asked me to do a darter care video, so I know the most about green sides. I also have rainbows, but I'm still learning more about the rainbows, so I'll do green sides first. And I also had Dan Man Fish Room request to me I do yellow perch, which in most situations I would have done, but sorry, Dan. The perch are still pretty small for me to be doing a care video. I'd prefer to wait till they get their more natural colors and adult size so once they hit around six inches I'll probably do a care video on them which should be coming up in a few months but yeah sorry I didn't do one on them yet but promise you it is coming but like I said greenside darter scientific name is Ethiostoma blenioids no other names family is perchidae which is perches and darters so for those who didn't know darters are actually in the same family as yellow perch walleye and sauger I learned uh, probably two years ago. And the origin, according to fishbase.com, is North America and Mississippi River basins from New York and Maryland to eastern Kansas and Oklahoma and the USA. And from Ontario and Canada to South Georgia, Alabama and Arkansas. In the USA and Atlantic Slope and Mohawk, Susquehanna and Potomac drainages in New York and Virginia, USA. That was a mouthful trying to read while I'm following the darters with my camera close up. They were described by Raffinesque in 1819. Tank size, I'd say for a pair, 10 gallons. You'd probably have a small school, some small species of minnow in with them too. 15 gallon or larger would be preferred. I got mine in a 20 high with. Two rainbow darters, a uh, bluefin killifish, and a pug nose minnow. And I'm still looking to add school uh, shiners or dace. Maximum size for the species averages four to five inches, but they can get six inches because they are the largest species in the Ethiostoma genus. Temperament is peaceful, but they may squabble over hiding spots with other darters, but almost never any damage is done to either fish guys had to answer my phone real quick but as far as experience goes this is a difficult level fish because they have very specialized dietary needs that most hobbyists aren't going to be able to meet and let's see where was I feeding is their omnivorous best foods are brine shrimp mice shrimp black worms blood worms very very small pieces of night crawler the most important thing why they're a difficult fish species is they need lots of snails. They need a lot, a lot, a lot of snails. Ideally, to get this species to their best health, you want to feed 50 snails a week per fish, which is a lot. And they also almost never acclimate to eating dry food, and if they do, they're probably not going to be too healthy on it. Temperature range for captivity, I'd keep it in... 56 to 74 Fahrenheit. They can go a bit higher, but I would avoid going above 76 ever. pH range, ideally 7.0 to 8.0. They can probably withstand down to 6.5, but no lower than that. 6.8 or higher, and you're good. For activity level, this is a pretty active fish, and most will learn to recognize their owner. Best tank mates are smaller and more timid North American native fish, such as the other darters, minnows, shiners, dace, native killifish, stone rollers, smaller chubs, certain suckers, and some of the more peaceful sunfish, such as orange spotted and bantams. For decorations, be sure to include a decent amount of rock work arranged in a way that you can give them hiding spots and caves that because they do like to hide occasionally, they'll just hop in and out of it. You can see my rainbow darter there always hides under the sponge filter. Uh, gravel or sand are both good substrates, but use loose gravel. 
my past experience with pretty coarse gravel with this species did not go too well so I have sand in there now with them green sides in particular can also benefit from having lush carpet algae because not only them being around it will influence their co greener colors but also eating it's good for their dietary needs and eating it can also make them greener as you can see my green male green side here he was pretty pale for a while but recently he's been eating a lot of carpet algae grown on my sponge filter so he's starting to get like a dark evergreen color to him these are not the best colored green side darters partially because this is pretty bright sand and that's also making my female pale but yeah they're normally a lot greener than that I'm working on getting the color up let's see plants are also helpful I have some hornwort Texas hornwort to be exact and water spray in here and I feel like that's helping their green coloration as well and just general comments overall their green side darters are very personable smaller and more timid native fish that work great in most native creek community tanks however they're not for beginners due to the fact they'll almost always only eat frozen or live food and need plenty of snails to support their health so thanks for watching guys, that's the native fish care for greenside darters. I will be making a rainbow darter care video coming up here, definitely planned in my series. And for those of you looking to get into darters, I might have scared you a little bit, but you really don't need to worry. Greensides are just a very challenging darter. Most of them aren't this hard to keep. Rainbows that I have in here with them are pretty hardy good beginner darters I wouldn't call them beginner fish but they're good darters to start with so yeah don't think that all darters are just difficult these species in particular just is I just started with this species for care videos because I know the most about them so yeah thanks for watching guys hopefully we can get this video as popular as the bullhead one and if it does I'll continue this series thanks for watching see you guys next time